Welcome into another edition of Mix in a Water Monday. I am joined by former Gamecock quarterback, but then again, Mr. Former Gamecock, do it, do it all, Mr. Utility Man, Savelle Newton. And Savelle, I was telling you, but we're, we're on remote here. We're in Charlotte. We got the background. This isn't a green screen, so hopefully no one comes up from behind us and does anything too crazy. So uh, <laughs> I don't want to have to be editing stuff left and right, man. I mean, there's already a lot to talk about from a Gamecock football standpoint. We don't need any extra work over here. So oh, yeah. with that all being said, everyone that saw the game Saturday night saw what happened. There's no way to sugarcoat it. We've seen from an offensive standpoint, just the progress just not being there. And then we're going to dig into that. With that being said, though, let's take a step back. This team's going into a bye week. As a former player, when you're not able to find that rhythm on offense, what is going on through your mind and what do you do during this week to be able to improve on some of those things? Well, right now, you know, it's just, it's just all about identity. Um, I don't think we have established a real identity as far as uh, this offense coming into the season, you would have, you would have thought that we would have been a, um, a heavy run team returning, returning the backfield uh, with, um, with Harris coming back um, and having Marshall, you know, Marshawn Lloyd coming back off of injury and to see, um, you know, the other guys, McDowell, White, those guys in the spring game. And, and just you would think, like I said, like we would have one of the most talented running back um, uh, rooms coming into this season. But just to see our performance going against uh we I mean we're four and four but going against um you know teams such as you know um you know <laughs> Eastern Illinois and can't get a run game you know uh East Carolina couldn't get a run game established um even Vanderbilt you know like those 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 are teams that we should have definitely exploited uh with our re- our running game but we haven't been able to do that um so that's that's one of the things we just don't have no identity right now so you're going into the bye week, you mentioned it, trying to find that identity. And this kind of goes into the big picture question that I'm sure a lot of Gamecock fans have been asking for the last couple of weeks. What is the issue right now with off with the offense? Now, you know better than anyone that that question sometimes is difficult to answer because as someone that played the game, you can look at it and be like, all right, this could be the issue, but at the same time, too, when you have a new offensive coordinator, the schemes are different. Obviously, things change up a little bit. And it's tough to truly know what's going on the inside. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing, though, in terms of what's holding this offense back? Because, you know, obviously there's talent there. There's been musical cheers at times, whether that be at the quarterback position, whether that be guys banged up at running back. Uh, we see, we've seen it right now with Jalen Brooks out of the lineup right now, wide receiver for personal reasons, not being with the team. What is holding this offense back, in your opinion? I mean, honestly, I just like I like I said, we don't have an identity. Um, I, I, that's one of the words I might hit on a hundred times. Like um, identity. I mean, we we brought we brought uh, a talented tight end back, Nick Muse, um, uh, and and also with adding Bell and Jenkins into that tight end room. Like like we have a very good tight end, a very good tight end room. Um, that That's something that could be big right now, utilizing Bell in multiple positions, uh, positions on the field, um, kind of like that H back field that uh, Patrick DeMarco uh, used to run, you know, having him around the program, being able to teach that would have been, would have been something to establish also with the offense. Um, I just, from what, from what I see personally, I just think we're, we're too, um, we're too, just stagnant in the, in the play calling. I, I don't think that there's not, there's no aggressiveness. Uh, we don't know whether we want to go fast. We don't know whether we want to go fast up tempo or whether we want to go slow. Uh, check with me at the line. A lot of it, I know um, anytime, most time when you got your, your coordinators that's, that's in the box, um, mostly in the box these days, a lot of times it's coming from the top, then it's coming to the sidelines, then it's coming to the field. So, um, you know, the, the quarterback, you kind of take, I think you take away from the quarterback from being able to make a lot of a lot of on-field adjustments because the play clock is running down. And then once you look over to the sideline and get a play, you got to run that play. So I think a lot of times, I think a lot of time what what's happening 
is the defenses are, are really starting to see that. They're starting to see like, okay, this offense, uh, once they, they get into it, so we don't need to show right now because we're not, we don't have no tempo. And if we get caught in this defense, we ain't a good enough defense to defend the, uh, the formation in because they don't motion. We don't, we don't do a lot of motioning. Um, pretty much where we line up is where we play. Um, and, and, and now in college, the era of college football that we're in, if there's no movement, there's no shifts, there's no, there's no jet sweeps, there's no, you know, <laughs> there's nothing going on. And, and, and it's, it's a whole lot of screens, a whole lot of RPOs, which can be very confusing to your offensive line. Um, if they're not you, if they're not used to it in the first in their first year, so it's a lot of stuff that that could be corrected. This bye week could be uh, very beneficial to the team. I mean, we're not we're not we're, we're four and four. I mean, you yeah. know, uh, in being four and four, we have won the games that we are supposed to win. Win. Um, we we um, we're not we're not looking like a um, an, a good offense at the moment, but we got a lot of a lot of talent that where we can make. Some few adjustments, simplify it, get back to um, you know down some downhill off tackle running, and and we we can we could actually you know possibly possibly do something good if we can make those adjustments. And you mentioned simplify, and I think that's one of the things that that Gamecock fans may be frustrated with because you know from an offensive standpoint, we've heard so much. You know, it's not even necessarily just pro style because Mike Bobo had pro style uh, mm -hmm. in that offense last season. But the point being is this, you have an off new offensive coordinator that's come in. There's definitely mm -hmm. been some uh, growing pains that has come with whether it be the offensive line with the blocking schemes, whether it be just the way, as you alluded to, how the plays are delivered to the quarterback during this bye week. Because I think some people, you know, look, at the end of the day, they're not going to get rid of an offensive coordinator in the middle of the season, especially on the first year. And if they do, then I'll put my hand up and I'll say, you know what, I was dead wrong. I just can't see that happening. What can you do, though, with this bye week? Because obviously you can't blow up the entire playbook, but what can you do to be able to simplify things, uh, to be able to make things at least head in a direction that, that, that's just much better than where it was just the other day when you had 15 yards after three quarters? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, like I said, we're not going to we're not going to get rid of an offense according. I mean, it's just just not going to happen, um, which, you know, uh, that that you know, sometimes some coaches make a decision as to, to uh, maybe switch up the, the play calling duties, but it's his offense. So, you know, once you come in as a head coach, you, you're kind of stuck with, with your coordinators because it, it's your key year to show, like, I made great hires at the coordinator position, with, which on defense have shown to be that we, we have made a great hire uh, uh, for our defense coordinator position. Um, the offensive coordinator, I mean, um, you know, I don't, I don't know him well. I don't know his background in, in, in play calling. I don't know his background as far as like coaching. So, you know, I can't really personally comment on him, um, as, as a coach and say, to say he's not a, uh, you know, a good coach, which, you know, we see in some of the, the, you know, the room, the different chat rooms and things like that he's in over his head, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, um, I just think right now, I think uh, what what needs to happen. I can remember um, when I was I was playing uh, multiple positions, and Coach Spurrier um, made made the adjustment to put me at quarterback. And what happened was we had a full playbook. I mean, Coach Spurrier has a a, a a nice playbook, but a lot of the plays that we ran, we just we just ran them out. We could run five different pass plays a game and run them out of five different, you know, different um, um, sets, uh, whether we motion to the sets, whether we shifted to the sets, it was just those five plays. And, you know, when I seen Vanderbilt running a lot of cover four against us, I was, you know, I'm screaming at the TV, you know what I'm saying? Give me some different route concepts other than, you know, um, running, running streaks up the field, you know, different things like that. You just got to get, you just got to get some, some some concept beaters uh, as far as like uh, looking at cover two being able to recognize it when the team is that cover four being able to recognize it and let let some of the quarterbacks just go out there and play. I mean these guys are smart enough. I mean Zeb is a is a is a is a coach. You know he's a coach playing quarterback. Dowdy has had the opportunity to be around. I mean he played in a very complex offense at Myrtle Beach High School. So these guys and Brown coming in. You know all these guys can make the calls, they can make the adjustments, they can make the reads, they can make the throw, but they need some form of like security as far as because we can't even establish a running game because I don't think the offensive line has 
fully, like you say, fully got the concept of what's going on. So I think if you simplify up front, uh, if a run play is a run play, keep it as a run play. Um, if a pass play is a pass play, let's make it a pass, a pass play. Uh, maybe maybe exit out of the RPOs right now because that's not working. Yeah, we look very confused on um, on film. Uh, if you ever watching a game, just rewind, just rewind a play after it's done while we're calling another play and watch the offensive line blocking up front. You got, you know, what I'm saying if you see if you see three, you know, three or four down linemen and we we're we're triple teaming, we're triple teaming the nose guard. That that there alone shows me that we're confused as far as the direction in our blocking scheme up front. So I just think maybe in this in this week off, if we can establish, like I said, we can establish some form of, of, of simplified concept on offense. I think we have the talent. And that's where we where many argue with me saying we don't have the talent, but I think we do have the talent to be competitive for the rest of the season. So let me ask you that, because I do want to go back and, and ask you one more question about the, the offensive line in a second. But um, obviously, you know, you and I, we, we tried to have a little conversation last night about talent. We didn't necessarily mm -hmm. agree um, or you didn't mm -hmm. necessarily agree with what I said when I said the South Carolina doesn't have the talent like A&M right now. We knew that um, you, yep. you didn't necessarily agree with me. And that's all right. Um, and that's why I wanted to have you on, because every time we talk, we're always cordial. So let me ask you this. What makes you feel that from a talent standpoint, South Carolina is on the same playing field, I should say, as Texas A&M? Um, because definitely there's no question. I mean, you look at Inambare, you look at um, the season that Jalen Foster is having. I mean, shoot, you can even look at um, the punter, Kay, and the way he's playing this season. I mean, that's another guy that should be able to get All-American um, mentions this year. I know Foster was on the midseason one. Mm -hmm. There's talent on the board. But would you where do you disagree in terms of the talent that they have to be able to compete against some of these teams right now? Because I think that's obviously one of the difficult parts. You're trying to be able to get that get get this team that, you know, obviously there was a lot of open roster spots this offseason. So from across the board standpoint, I just feel like the talent levels is not the same with A&M right now. But I don't think that's any fault of the players that they do have in there because there's obviously some talented players and then obviously a coaching staff that didn't necessarily recruit these guys. Well, I mean, you know, when I look at things, you know, at, if I'm coming in as a head coach, you know, um, I'm, I'm first thing I'm doing is assessing talent to see well, what what type of guys I got, what type of dogs I got to go in the fight with, to go to war with and everything like that. And if you look, if you looked at our roster coming into the season, you saw you saw uh, as much as talent as around the SEC. I mean, we we we've been beaten down with with uh, for the past two years with of playing the toughest the toughest um sec schedule uh almost in the whole nation so you know we've been able to hone that talent to go against these tough schedules to come in and have a defensive line a defensive line that's full of experienced guys like uh you know pickens uh like you said inabari um you know uh big big ellis my guy you know and 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 to bring in a a a, a sack leader that led the nash the, the nation in sacks from Georgia State, you know, um, and, and we brought in a lot of guys. You still got you got Staley that's coming back, and then to have our secondary, our secondary with talent with talent that's just as talented as as I, I would say Cam Cam Smith is just as talent talented as as those two guys that went you know went that's playing in NFL now. Believe it or not. Um, on the corner and and to have um, Dow come in and, and he's been experienced and we just got the talent on defense. When you go to the offensive side of the ball, we didn't lose but two offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. We lost two offensive linemen up front. So what is the issue to say that we don't have the talent? This is the same team that blocked for Kevin Harris last year, which Kevin Harris is still here. We gained we gained Marshawn Lloyd back. Um, we added we added on a speedy guy that we we haven't had around in a long time, like Medal. We got White that could come in and, and, and gash, you know, gash on third downs um, for third and short that could catch out the backfield. Um, you look at our receiver core, our receiving core, we we have a more of a core established core this year instead of just having Shot Smith. Instead of just having Debo or Brian Edwards, those guys that that are, are have been solo guys. Now we got a, a core where we can spread the ball around um, with Leggett coming in, showing that he's been missing the action. You got a six-seven freaking nation 
that that uh in Jenkins that we're not even utilizing. I mean, we not we haven't thrown him a fade ball yet from what I've seen as far as like um um in, on the offensive mind, we got ta- we got we got Muse that's been back. We got Bell to come back. So where is the talent the talent that's not enough? We should not be struggling with East Carolina. We should not be struggling to put up 200 to 300 yards against Eastern Eastern uh, Eastern Illinois team. But uh, we shouldn't be 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 in a ball game a dog fight with a defense out the Bell us out against Troy. But when you look at our talent across the board, we can't necessarily say we don't have that that talent. Um, you know, with Birch being a five star, uh, you know, you got you got so many guys up front that that our defensive line, like I'm pretty sure if you take our offensive guys and switch them over, you know, put those guys, even if you take them to Vanderbilt and, let, and <laughs> wherever you take them, I'm pretty sure that all of those guys will be starters there or or even at Kentucky that, that beat us, that's been pretty good this year. So I'm not sure where we're missing talent in what position to have a kicker that's the best kicker in the SEC, to have a punter that's the best punter in the SEC. Where can't we line up with Texas and them and beat them? Where can't we line up with any team other than Georgia and, and beat them? We should be in the games every single game. We should not have 11 yards, 15 yards and a half. That there, right alone, I don't care if I'm the head coach, I'm pushing the button right there, um, you know, at, at halftime. That's, that's unacceptable. So, um, you know, Talent wise, we have all the talent to win. I looked at this team and said we could have we could have competed this year, um, especially with a guy that's up tempo, up with the energy that that Beamer brings to the game. So I, I have no idea where we are missing talent. I don't see no talent missing at all. And I'm not one, and, and I'll probably get slapped for saying this because I'm working at Gamecock Central <laughs> now. So I know, you know. Uh, recruiting and this and that, four star, five stars. I'm gonna be honest. I could give two rats asses about all that stuff. I can say that now <laughs> over this station, uh, or yeah. this, this this website. Um, and the reason I say that is because you know you look at what's going on at Clemson right now. Do I think DJ Uyunglele is a trash player? Absolutely not. He's just not playing that well. But the point being is, go you know five stars not helping him right now. But I, I think more than anything and. Um, Maybe we can just leave it off on this. We can agree to disagree big picture wise. But um, mm-hmm. I, I think I think some of the issues right now is there's talented players. There's definitely players that like the Zach Pickens of the world, obviously the Inambares, players that have elevated their game this year. We certainly know that. I think there's a lot of raw talent, too. And I think when things start to click and not just from an offensive standpoint, but from defense, too, when guys are able to feel more comfortable in the scheme, maybe that talent that I'm questioning right now from from a whole uh, will be more on display. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see how that develops. One last thing I do want to ask you, Savelle, because I think you bring a tremendous perspective as someone that played the quarterback position. And this, and I'm not asking you to necessarily throw QBs under the bus here. I know that's a special paternity. But my, my question to you is this. It's easy to look at the offensive line, an offensive line that, as you alluded to before, four mm-hmm. guys came back this year that helped Kevin Harris be the lead rusher in the sec now of course we know Wanham didn't play the other night he's banged up right now offensive line has been shaky this year offensive line looks like they're continuing to learn the blocking scheme and they're having trouble pick that picking that up but with that being said from an offensive standpoint from a quarterback how much of it can be sometimes not just on the offensive line from a blocking standpoint it could be on the quarterback maybe he's not able to identify something pre-snap uh running back maybe he's not picking up a blocking assignment tight end maybe he's not blocking down on plays you know, when you look at it, and I, I know, you know, I'm asking to go through every single game, every play, but just big picture of it all, um, how much of that can make a difference? Because I think some people just want to simply blame the offensive line, and that's not to take the blame off them. They certainly could mm-hmm. improve their, their game uh, as well. Well, I mean, when you look at when when you play in a quarterback position, man, it's, it's – it, it's like once once a play is called, you're the coach. Like it it, it it's a week long of studying film. Um, you know, half of the time I was asleep, so I'm gonna be honest. So I didn't really study film. I just went out and played. I, I already knew I was gonna get sacked or, or have pressure coming against me. But no, but seriously, when you got when you got these guys like um like I said, Dowdy, uh, Zeb and and Brown, these guys know how to adjust. They know how to adjust. They've been doing it their whole career. But but actually, when you get into the play clock, once the play clock is under 10, there's no time to make adjustments. You know, we run up, we line up, we, we get we get set. We're in a set. And, you know, uh, by the time you get to play from the from the box 
to the to the sidelines to the field. The quarterback has no chance, no time to make adjustments. He has to go with it, um, you know, or or run the risk of of you know getting a penalty, five yard penalty, which which, which uh, stalls the offense anyway. So a lot of time, I just think it, it's on the quarterback, but also the, the quarterback only can be a coach on the field if the coach allows him to. Uh, I was watching, I was watching the the Clemson, the Clemson and Pittsburgh game, and and I know uh, we're talking about um, you know more talent as far as like experience when you watch Pickett I mean he got to play he got to play no more looking at the sideline like he's he's on the field making adjustments you look at DJ you know like he ha- he's not having the best best year right now we like you said we know he's very talented you know these guys are making the adjustments on the field I don't see I don't see our guys making these adjustments I know one time when in in interview I can't remember who the interview was with but I've seen that coach Satterfield said that these guys have the chance the ability to make play checks at the line but we don't give them enough time to make play checks so if they do play check the offensive line never has a chance to make their calls up front to identify the front identify the mic to do all these different things that that is that you have to do when making a check. So a lot of time it is on the quarterback. Most of the time it is on the quarterback, but the only reason why it's on the quarterback is because of the sideline, because the sideline is late getting the plays in. And, and, and I think we need to establish, are we a tempo team or are we a huddle team? This year, we might need to be a huddle team. Mm-hmm. We might need to go to the huddle. We might not need to to just come out in a set. We need we might need to say, okay, let's try the huddle. Let's see what it works like. Let's get a play. Let's come out of the huddle, know the play, make the defense adjust adjust to us and run plays. Well, right now, the quarterbacks are the quarterbacks are making the offensive line look like look like crap, and if the offensive line is making the quarterback look like crap. But the only reason why they're probably looking like crap. Is because of of what's going on from from the box to the sideline to the field. So mm-hmm. so I like I said, it's not a talent issue. Definitely not a talent issue. So so people can stop saying we don't have a good enough offensive line. I would have took that offensive line and did some damage with with um did did some damage during my days instead of playing with three or four walk ons starting when I was the quarterback. So like I said, we have these guys that can make plays up front but they're not getting the calls in. They're confused. I talked with Jamon Meredith. He sees confusion. Um, you know, he had some time in the NFL and he was my, my um, offensive tackle. So we talk a lot. Um, so it's just confusion. Uh, and once you eliminate the confusion, simplify it, you know, slide right, slide left, get some cuts in, you know, pickups and, and things like that. And just let the guys play football instead of trying to, you know, bring that NFL vibe to, to the college game. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And once it just doesn't work, you just got to make adjustments. So this is the week we're sitting here at four and four. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to, um, you know, win two games, uh, sneak two games in, but the, the playbook has to be simplified and it has to be, you know, able to transition from, like I said, from the box to the fi- to the sideline, to the field. Otherwise, it's on the quarterbacks because the offensive line only can do what is called. So that is, it's a lot of confusion that I'm seeing. Well, that is why you the man. You got the, the, the beard growing out. By the time football season rolls around next year, that thing might be on the ground. He's Savelle Newton. Appreciate you joining us on this week's edition of Mix in a Water. Uh, we will continue to keep you updated all by week long and get you ready the following week for the Florida game. Guys, have a good week.